Your brain can't do that when it's stressed. All it can do is stay in this exact same rut and do the same thing over and over again. Fascinating, huh? Very important stuff. Um, so they did also some studies that tie into this about uh, how we perceive memories, whether they're a past memory or a future memory. So you take this fMRI, which is this brain scan, and it shows the brain function, what part of the brain is being lit up or used and what's happening. They did an fMRI on people and they had them think about something in the past, something that already happened. And when they think about that past memory, there's a way that the brain holds a past memory and they would see where it is and exactly how it shows up and lights up. Then they had these same people think about something that was going to happen in the future. They would imagine something that was going to happen tomorrow or next week and they would only imagine and visualize it. And the brain had the same experience holding this future fake memory in the same place as a past memory that was very real. Okay, now think about this. When we're talking about the neural networks, and the neural networks, one of the things they're doing is looking for past memories and experiences to create the beliefs or the resources or the abilities or the skills to make something happen. But the same thing can happen when the brain creates a neural network of dendrites that grow to something in the future that hasn't happened yet. So it grows this very real network to this future memory. And the fact that the brain really doesn't even know the difference between a past and a future or imagined event tells us that we have the ability to either continue to dwell on all our past events if they're failures or difficulties or stresses or addiction or create an entirely new scenario and let our brain start growing some dendrite growth toward that future scenario thinking it's real and then it grows a whole neural network based on that which brings all kinds of interesting uh, possibilities into the equation doesn't it yes for instance what if you don't spend any time imagining your future or imagining and envisioning the skill that you want or imagine yourself being free from your addiction or your um, uh, test anxiety or something that you really suck at. If you never spend any time imagining that you don't have that anymore and, and knowing how you, are, um, how you are reacting and responding without that, if you never spend any time doing that, how is your brain going to know where to go or where to find all of the evidence and the skills and the abilities it needs to make that happen? It only has really the neural networks that are going to all that past crap of, you know, you're not good enough, you always fail at that, I, I suck at this, I have a sugar addiction, I have test anxiety, I, my golf game is in the crapper. <laughs> And on and on and on. Make sense? Maybe you have insomnia and you have a ton of evidence in your life to show that you have insomnia. You're not going to get over it. You've had it for years. And all you're going to do is continue every night when you go to bed to lay there and stare at the ceiling. Well, have you ever spent any time envisioning or imagining that your brain knows how to go to sleep easily and gently the moment your head hits the pillow? Have you spent any time imagining how it feels when you wake up in the morning, waking up refreshed and energized and realizing, wow, I slept eight hours in a row. If you've never done that, the only evidence your brain has for how you sleep at night is to go to its neural network that is a massive super highway of connections that prove that you have insomnia and you can't sleep at night. Make sense? Cool. All right. So that's um, part two of how your brain works. Now, you remember that <clears throat> the stressed rats are stuck in a rut. They have no resources, no creativity, no problem solving ability. Okay. That's because those neural networks are just stuck on stress mode. And you remember that um, the brain loses all of its ability to find a new solution. Uh, remember that a past memory shows up in the brain in the same way that a future imagined memory does. And you may have heard it before that the, um, the brain doesn't know the difference between a real and a subconscious, or no, a, I'm sorry, the brain doesn't know the difference between a real and an imagined event. You may have heard that. And it turns out that it's true. Looking at it on an fMRI scan, it doesn't know the difference between a real and an imagined event. You consciously know the difference. You know that um, if you imagine yourself um, 
cruising through the ocean in a boat, you know, in the middle of the Atlantic or something. You can imagine yourself doing that. You know consciously that you're not actually doing that, that you haven't done it, that you're not going to be doing it tomorrow. But because your brain is imagining it, it stores it in a way that is not a conscious thought. It stores it in a way that puts emotions and thoughts and smells and feelings and all the aspects of the experience into a memory. And this memory holds emotions and in chemicals and it releases chemicals into your body. Well, the more you dwell on the past thoughts or the stressful thoughts, this past memory holds that same chemical makeup, the emotions, the thoughts, the smells, the feelings, and it sends chemicals into your body, which might be negative chemicals and stress chemicals, and send more cortisol in your body, which is not really good. Or you may be envisioning yourself in a future moment when you're feeling good and doing certain things. You're over your addiction and you're running a marathon, and then your brain has that future memory, and that sends chemicals into your body that are things like endorphins and, and things that make you actually feel good. Make sense? Right on. Okay, well... Glad you're here. Um, and remember, if you haven't seen part one yet, go back and find that as well because you want to make sure you know about that. Okay, I'm Wendy Friesen, and I will talk to you again soon. Mm -hmm.